everybody and welcome to another weekly update video. So it feels like it's been a really fast paced busy week and I suppose it has to be honest we've had Microsoft Ignite and albeit a virtual event it's still been pretty full on and the amount of commitments that I had were massive. So yeah let's get into some of the Azure news that's been happening. Obviously there's been a ton of news happening this week. Um, I think I've been doing some recap videos each day at Ignite trying to um, digest some of the news myself and share some of the, the highlights that I found. So um, those are really valuable as well, I think so at least. So um, if you haven't checked them out, check them out because you can find some more information as well. But in terms of recapping, we've saw a few things go generally available. So we saw Azure Arc for Windows and Linux servers go generally available. We saw Windows VMware solutions or AVS go generally available, which is really exciting. And I'm really excited to see where that product now goes and how our customers adopt it. And we saw some great announcements in terms of preview features. So we have saw um, Azure Auto Manage for virtual machines living on Azure announced, which I still need to dig into because that looks really cool and I'd love to get a chance to actually use that and, and try and demo it. So um, if I don't get to it, probably one of my team will get to it and we'll be talking about it on IT Ops. Um, what else happened? So we had preview as well, Azure Resource Mover, which is going to enable you to move some of your resources from region to region much easier. There's going to be a whole kind of dependency mapping and initiation of the move so that you can do that. And I know that's going to be useful to some of our customers who have maybe been using Azure for a few years now and picked a data center that maybe wasn't as close to them as they'd like. Um, and now with um, over 60 regions we have, um, you can now maybe pick a region that's closer to you and, and, and meet some work um, needs for you with um, Azure Resource Mover. So that's been cool. Um, we've saw some things in terms of Microsoft 365 as well. So we saw Microsoft 365 Lighthouse launch, which if you're familiar with Azure Lighthouse, is pretty much going to be the same product for Microsoft 365. So managed partners will be able to almost consolidate the management of their customers' tenants into one place. So those time-consuming tasks that made your life a little bit um, troublesome, trying to restoot somebody's password by having to log into their tenant on either, you know, an in-private browser session or whatever, um, are now can be managed all in one place. So really um, excited about, again, where our customers and our partners are going to be using that. It's in preview, obviously. Um, what else did we see? So Azure Migrate team launched something that I am definitely going to be scheduling to look at next week. Um, they've brought out, so if you've ever heard me talking about migration, you'll hear me talking about how important discovery and assessment is, and especially the deep dive discovery where you look at how your servers are all interconnected because let's face it, your servers don't interact um, individually. They don't act on their own, or there's very few servers that will be siloed on their own um, and not have some kind of connectivity back to other servers, whether that be, you know, a traditional, you know, a SQL server talking to a web app and providing some information for that um, website that you've, you're hosting. Um, there's connect Activity going on and even just that rudimentary connectivity between your servers and um, connecting back to Active Directory, for example. So the discovery piece is really important and I always stress that to everybody. Um, but what the Azure Migrate team have worked on and released is a Power BI dashboard to pull some of that information out of your Azure Migrate product uh, project and put it into a Power BI uh, dashboard and report. And it looks, from what the screenshots that I've seen, it looks fairly comprehensive and a great way of showcasing that information, not only to your IT department, but also to some of your senior leadership team. So I am going to be digging into that next week and hopefully we'll have um, a blog at least and maybe a video showcasing it. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that as well because I think we kind of talked about something like this a few years ago and never released anything. Um, so, so it's good that they've now um, followed suit and re, um, re looked at that and launched that Power BI um, dashboard or report. So yeah, that's that's cool as well. Um, trying to think of some of the other things that we saw. Um, there's probably a whole host. Windows Admin Center now has a portal version, so it's now built into the Azure portal. Um, we've also seen um, a ton of products rename themselves and I definitely don't remember all the names um, of what they were and what they now are. Um, but it's in my recap video, I think from day two, 
and I am going to be writing a blog post about that just to help us keep it straight and make sure we're all um, looking after that. I think most of the products that were renamed um, were more, like, more in the 365 space, but I think it's important because some of these products do kind of um, work in tangent a bit, little bit with some of the Azure stuff as well. And it's also good to have a reference point, um, even just for myself, um, on what all these product changes were if people are asking me about them. So I'm definitely going to um, write that up at some point. So yeah, I think that's that's kind of the highlight news. At least that's the news that stuck in my head and I've been focusing on. There's a whole slew of developer announcements and I know there was some stuff around GitHub code spaces and support from Visual Studio 2019. I saw Scott Hanselman and Abel Wang get really excited about that and how they could use that as developers. Um, not my area of expertise, but um, that's definitely something um, if you're in that developer space, you should check out check out Scott and Abel's session at Ignite because um, Abel also played the guitar. So it, it was actually quite a good session. I, I, I remember watching it, not really understanding what they were talking about. Um, but yeah, Abel's enthusiasm and Scott's enthusiasm as well came across. And yeah, it's probably worth watching uh, if you have some kind of interest in that developer Visual Studio uh, GitHub code spaces space. So um, yeah, it's been a busy week and I wanted to actually tell you, I don't know if, if this is of interest, but um, what it was like backstage for me because I was taking part in live interviews on the main stage or the main live stream on my Ignite um, website and yeah I wanted to share what it was a bit like for me and some of the people behind the scenes doing some of that so last year at Ignite we obviously were in person in Orlando and we had this big Channel 9 stage where we sat as news reporters and um, had teleprompters we had the cameras with the light so we were having to check and see which camera had the light to look at it and um, yeah, there was all sorts of people talking in my ear and ear pussies and, and tell me how much time I had to do and screaming at me as what I had to say and stuff like that to, to hand off the sessions. This year, it was kind of the same, I'll be honest. So it was kind of the same. What we had to do was join a Microsoft Teams meeting. And when we joined, the team had put up a teleprompter on one side. So I had the text that I had to say to feed in and feed out of my slot. And I had a mini version of what was on the live stream. And um, they played a little bit of that in my ear so that I knew what was happening. So I knew if one of the hosts in the studio were saying, and we're going to be handing over to Sarah. And then when they finished, I could start my piece. Um, and then I also had a timer um, that counted me down for my session. So I either had like 15 minutes or 10 minutes or however uh, long my slot was. And the timer was really cool because it was... Um, there was a green bar, so I was good for the time. Then there was a yellow bar, which was starting to kind of warn me that I'm getting near the end. And then there was a red bar. It, everything turned red in the clock, so that I knew time was really running out. And that was really good because um, I think you can just see it in the background. So I have my webcam kind of over there. So my webcam's... Let me see. Can't point on the camera. So my webcam's up here and my laptop is below it usually. And I usually stand up for these kind of presentation sessions so that the camera is actually at my eye level. So I can look directly at the camera. Um, and then obviously my laptop's a little bit below. So it was good to be able to see the things like the teleprompter in large text and even just the countdown of the timer and the colours um, and like in my periphery vision so that I didn't have to keep looking down and then it would look real weird if I was on camera. Um, and then obviously I had people talking in my ear as well, giving me a countdown um, if I was coming out of a video that was playing on the mainstream and um, yeah, there was nobody going to be handing me over. Um, so yeah, it was it was pretty well organised. It was really smooth. The people that helped me, um, Gar, was the person that was um, kind of being my producer and helping me in the background and and that was really great as well and I also had on my other screen um, a teleprompter as well that was feeding some of the questions that I was asking my audio uh, my guest around so yeah that was that was really positive it was really good experience and I enjoyed it to be honest it was a little bit stressful especially and um, those nerves kicking in just before you went on stage or went live on the camera and um, but yeah it was really well organized everybody was really supportive um, and I think we all managed to pull off Ignite um, this year obviously let me know what your feedback is if you enjoyed Ignite 
night, didn't enjoy it, anything you would change. It looks like we're doing another virtual Ignite in March next year. So definitely if there's things we can improve on, please do feedback back to us. Either you can feed it back to me and I'll feed it back into the team or there were session evaluations happening um, on some of the sessions. So definitely take the time to fill some of them in as that feedback will be listened to. So it's, it's definitely worth feeding that back as well. And I keep pressing the desk to up and down it. So um, yeah, so I uh, hopefully that's been useful. Hopefully the news recap and some of the behind the scenes. I do wish I'd caught a picture or a screenshot of what it looked like um, behind the scenes for me as an interviewer. But um, hopefully my description made some sense and you've enjoyed this video. And again, please do hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. It helps kind of the YouTube algorithms push it up to other people to define my content. And if you're a new subscriber, thank you and welcome. And if you haven't subscribed already, you know what to do. And I will catch you in my next video.